Hey, how's it going? So today I've got a quick little video in regards to the Permobile Volt Pro charger. This is the new charger that charges at 10 amps for the new batteries that Permobile released in around 2021 or something like that. They're a new to them AGM style type of battery and they require a very specific charging voltage curve that's not the same as the older chairs were. So they shipped out this charger which charges a little bit faster. Real quick, this is not a disclaimer just for the sake of a disclaimer. I fully understand why Permobile probably doesn't publish this information. There is a very small percentage of users, in the words that Apple normally uses when there's a problem, but there's a very small number of people that this information is going to be useful to or even apply to. However, there's a bunch of other information in this video that I feel is relevant and this is one of those things that, uh, you know, not having the information, I know in at least two cases of people that have contacted me have actually damaged their older chairs because they were given one of these chargers and it was not set up properly. So don't do this unless there's a specific use case and I just feel like this needs to be out there on the internet so that people can find the proper information when they need to repair their chairs. Again, this won't apply to everyone, but uh, as per usual, don't be dumb. I do have to mention, originally this little charging jack, they had an issue with them first off, uh, well, when it first launched. Apparently there's an issue with the manufacturer or the supplier of the parts for the actual charging cable, but they would get hot and potentially melt this charging jack right here. They've since fixed the issue, but I think it was around March or May of 2021. But if you are still having the issue where this thing gets very hot and doesn't want to unplug from your chair, stop using that charger and contact Permobile Tech directly. Now, I've mentioned this in the past and a bunch of people piled on saying, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go to the DME, all this other stuff. That's all fine and good, but once this charging jack starts melting, the joystick has to be replaced and the charger has to be replaced. Some people go to their DME and they'll replace the joystick and maybe replace the charger, but it's still one of the old affected ones. I think this issue is more or less um, been resolved by this time because it's been a, I don't know, year and a half or something like that. But contact Permobile Tech and if they say something dumb or whatever, just tell them your DME has no idea what they're talking about and you know, you need their help. So anyways, if we notice here on the sheet, we have reference to flashing LEDs. It says one flash for Permobile AGM gel and three flashes for non-Permobile gel batteries. The website that used to have the information on how to do this is now a 404 error. It has been removed. First off, let's demonstrate here what they're talking about as far as the LED flashes go. I was under the assumption when I read the manual, manual originally that when you plug it into your chair, the LEDs are going to blink. But that is not the case. What it has to do with is when you first connect this charger to power. We've got four lights across here. Like most people, I leave this charger plugged into the wall all the time. I understand in the manual they always say, oh, you have to plug your chair into the charger and then plug the charger into the wall. And then when you want to unhook your chair, unplug the charger from the wall and then unplug it from your chair. I'm not going to lie. In my opinion, that is not necessary. Nobody does that. At one point they tried to blame that improper use is what was causing the melting joystick port issues. That is not the case. So um, I don't normally give advice like this, but I'm going to say that I never unplug this from the wall. I simply leave this thing connected to the mains and the only part I touch is this. When I plug it into my chair at night and when I unplug it in the morning. I say all that to say, it's probably confusing what they mean with the flashes because I never unplug this and I never see it blink. Okay, in its stock form, this is what it looks like. You plug it into power, we get a single blink and a power light. Show you again. Don't really think much of that. What this means right now is this thing is set up in 10 amp charging mode and the specialized charging profile with different voltage curves and whatnot that are designed to work with the Permobile Volt Pro or their new AGM batteries or whatever they're calling them. It, um, there's different names depending on what manuals you look in. Very important, unplug this from the wall before you continue. I'm going to repeat myself several times here. If we flip this thing over and look at the bottom, 
you can see we've got a couple different things. There's some random warning about something or other. And then there's this little sticker right here that has an exclamation mark on it. Underneath this sticker is where the secret switch is located that allows us to take this thing from 10 amp mode and put it back into 8 amp mode, which is widely compatible with the rest of the older chairs before Volt Pro came out. The sticker's a little bit screwed up because it's been on and off of here a number of times. But what I like to do is get a knife or something similar to where you can just get it under the edge of the sticker and peel it off. It's best to save this sticker and it is actually metalized. So it's almost like it was designed to be taken on and off. But we want to save this for later because as you can see, when we peel this off, we now have a couple of holes that lead into the inside of this charger. So it's best to cover that back up when you're done so you don't get you know dirt or debris or whatever else in there. This is a little bit hard to show on camera, but if you look right here under the switch, you can see we have some marks. There's a one, there's a two, and there's a three. Currently from the factory, you can see our little switch down here is on this side. I apologize, it's really difficult to film this, but the switch has three positions. Position one is going to be the 10 amp volt pro mode. Position three is what's going to roll this thing back into what I'm calling the compatibility mode that only works at eight amps and is compatible with most other older power chairs. Position two here in the middle is not a valid setting. Um, I'm assuming that's for something else. I don't know what it does. If we look over here too, you can see there's some pin headers. I think that's sort of like a JTAG style programming port or something like that. Something to do with use in manufacturing. But back over here, the only two valid positions are one or three. So we're gonna take this switch and move it from position one and put it to position three. Pretty easy. Now to change that switch, once again, make sure it's unplugged from the wall. And you wanna get some sort of non-metallic object. I think a toothpick would work perfectly in this case. Uh, you just don't want anything metal in there because that switch is very delicate and very easy to damage. Something like a toothpick in theory should break before that switch does. But here in my case I don't have any toothpicks here so I just kind of cut a zip tie at a weird angle and I'm able to kind of reach down in there and move that switch. So I'm just going to put this down in. can't really see what I'm doing. Huh, maybe you can actually hear that. Click, click. Now we're in position three. Yeah, there we go. Position three all the way to the opposite side. And that's basically all there is to it. Now when we plug this thing in, we're gonna get the same power light, but these lights here are going to flash three times. There you go, three blinks. Now you can safely plug this into an older permobile chair or technically another brand of chair that has group 24 or group 34 batteries. I don't necessarily recommend charging a chair that has group 22 batteries in it with an 8 amp charger. Um, that's a story for another time. But once again, if you have an older Permobile and this is the only charger you have, that is how you switch it into compatibility mode. We're going to go ahead and take this sticker and put it back on the bottom here just to cover up. And it, see, it's like I said, it's aluminized. So it's almost like this was designed to come on and off of here. So we'll just put that back on there. And uh, that's basically it. Incidentally, a couple of cool features about this charger. It comes with this little hook on the front here, and this allows you to take your charging cord and hang it on the charger. This thing is mountable in two different ways. We've got hooks here on the back, so you can mount it on the wall like that, which that's really handy for hooking your cord in there. Also on the bottom, on the feet, if for some reason you want to mount it down to a flat surface, We've got a couple of other spots down here that you can see that will allow you to mount this thing to like a tabletop or something like that. Um, I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that, but it's pretty handy. When the charger comes from Permobile, this piece is not attached. So if you have one of these that doesn't have this on here, that means your DME probably threw away the packaging or something like that. Um, but you should have a box with a manual and stuff that comes with this when your chair is delivered there's a little torque screw that holds that thing on there. So for whatever reason, if your charger didn't come with this, I'd get on the phone and talk to him and be like, hey, dig that stuff out of the trash, I want that. Mounting these things on the wall is super handy. And they are designed also, you can see the feet stick out here on the back and these stick out as well. So if you mount this to a surface, here's my surrogate wall. If you mount this to a wall, 
you can see we've got room for airflow behind there. So they are in fact designed to be wall mountable. And that's what it looks like in this scenario. Still got space underneath it. I don't even think there's, yeah, there's no vents on the bottom anyways. So there you go. That's probably everything you need to know about this new style of charger that Permobile is using. In case you're wondering, I actually use a Victron Blue Smart charger on my chair. They make a whole bunch of different products in that line. But basically, I charge my chair with a DC to DC converter. I've selected what is considered a standard charging profile, and I've been doing that with my chair for over a year now, and the batteries are still fine. I have noticed, however, that when I use the 10 amp mode on this thing, my battery seems to drain a little bit faster than normal. Now, I don't know if that's because I've been using the wrong type of charger with my chair for a year and it's damaged the batteries, but I can still easily get 14 miles of range on this 2021 F3 when I'm charging it with that Victron charger. Now, it does have programmable profiles, so if I knew exactly what these batteries needed, I would be able to program that in and work fine. Now, obviously, with a company like Permobile, nationwide, multinational, whatever, they have warranties and stuff they have to look out for. And, you know, it makes sense that they want people to just use this and not screw with it. Once again, in America at least, warranties are somewhat irrelevant when it comes to power wheelchairs that are funded. Because if something breaks within reason, I mean, obviously, overutilization is a thing where if I need a new batteries every three months, then I'm probably doing something wrong. But in my case, if I get a year and a half, two years, three years out of these batteries, I can get them replaced, no questions asked, and it'll be covered by insurance. So anyways, my thoughts about this, brief info about how I charge my chair. Uh, my use case is a little bit different once again because running on batteries and an inverter and solar panels and all that stuff, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have all the needless power conversion and whatnot. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And if you're a technical person that likes to charge their Volt Pro batteries with something other than this, um, let us know down below. I'm curious. I'm sure there's other people like me out there. There has to be, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.